Well, hello and welcome back to Tucson Tuesday. And today we got a Chonky Boy. This is kind of the premium knife, or at least the first one that has uh, come out of uh, Tucson's recent collaboration with David Chen. Um, he's done work for uh, quite a few other um, budget uh, Chinese brands um, in the past. Uh, Petrified Fish, I think Shieldon, uh, just a whole bunch of, uh, different manufacturers and stuff like that, but made quite a few of them, but this is one of the, uh, the few titanium folders that he's got, and it's, uh, it's a unique beast. So, first we can see here, we have, uh, Micarta inlays. This is not the highest quality Micarta that, um, Tucson has to offer, this is um, the kind of stuff that they've uh, attempted to dye black, but um, their original meh carta, which is kind of what this is, uh, doesn't take that color all that well, so it's kind of um, wearing off. It'll probably eventually just turn into um, their uh, their normal kind of look to it, but that's fine with me. This does have a bit more texturing on the, uh, the micarta than uh, a lot of the other stuff, though. So that's pretty good. It doesn't actually feel bad in this uh, particular case here. Pocket clip is um, quite large. Uh, I really like it though. Um, works great. Comes in and out of the pocket really, really nice. And it's not uh, pencil thin, so it kind of stays put instead of um, having the tendency to rock around in your pocket like um, some uh, very, very uh, thin pocket clips can do. We got a very, very large. Um, lanyard hole here with uh kind of the chicago screws on either side there oh yeah and the pocket clip is um kind of internally mounted there so a little bit different we have large pivot and call out pivot collars here and these ones are domed um rather than uh the uh the flat ones this would make it uh much more difficult for uh someone to uh fully and properly um kind of grind that off if they were uh, really so offended by that that uh, they wanted to change that up i would probably suggest some sort of a slack belt system or something like that you get like something straight like a stone and you're going to have a hard time getting that uh, nice and even all the way around but yeah, there you go so this thing has a hole in the blade and uh, i can't for the life of me uh, like ever uh, deploy it that way so flipper tab only pretty much uh, and we're going to flick it open, and, uh, yeah, this thing is weird. Real weird. Uh, so let's go ahead and, uh, kind of talk through it a little bit here. we got a really, really tall blade. Uh, this is D2 steel. They are, um, still planning to use, uh, 154CM for some of their more premium knives outside of using the, uh, the YJ01-V1, um, kind of blade steel, which is their... Almost proprietary, uh, kind of a M390 fork or whatever, but uh, for the mid tech or, or the mid um, steels or whatever, uh, they plan on using 154CM, but they haven't really come out with any of those yet. And uh, only one or two uh, in N690, which they're using for uh, kind of their lower end moving forward. But uh, okay, so what we have here is we have a uh, 3.26 inch blade from that little uh, point there out to the tip. So not incredibly long, but uh, still very, very powerful. We got this uh, large section here that comes down to a nice geometric, um, nice and fine there. Uh, what I was trying to say is the cutting geometry for it works out really, really well. And for the top part, um, it is basically a Scandi grind. Um, it goes straight down to zero. Um, and it's not a chisel ground knife. It's, uh, it's on both sides there. So for the most part, if you're looking to, uh, maintain this section here, which is still, it's pretty darn sharp, but maybe not the absolute sharpest Scandi grind out of the box ever, but still very, very serviceable, um, is you would probably end up using a, a, a strop. Um, you can actually feel, uh, when you're putting it on, uh, at least a stone first before you, uh, try to do that with, um, leather that adds a little bit of give, but you can actually feel where it, um, uh, meets there. And then you can, uh, pull that back to, uh, you know, go ahead and strop that. Or you can immediately ruin it, um, 
well, ruin it, but change it into a, uh, a V edge by uh, doing some sort of other sharpening on it. But you're going to want to do a, a pretty steep uh, angle to uh, not try to fight through uh, so much thickness there. Yeah, it is kind of what it is. This is really, really strange to have a, a scandy ground for um, the, uh, the front part of a knife and then a, a standard um, V edge or whatever you want to call that uh, for the, uh, the standard portion there. Uh, we have a heck of a lot of milling going on here. Uh, first thing I want to mention is the plunge grind done fantastically. We can see exactly where that ends. Uh, right in the middle of that uh, sharpening choil. I wouldn't call it a finger choil myself, as you can see here. Uh, so that's done quite well. Uh, we also have that hole that I was talking that I couldn't quite um, deploy the blade from, but it does have some milling. It's got that hole, as well as um, four of these little channeled guys in here on either side. So there's that. And then we have some crazy aggressive uh, crenellation kind of uh, jumping going on up top here. It might be a little more aggressive than what you're used to. I don't really think it feels sharp, but uh, so it, it's not like a super acute. Um, it is a little bit more crenellation-y, but um, still, it's um, it might be a little bit more aggressive than what you're used to at first. I don't think it's a bad thing. You know, I've kind of gotten used to it a little bit. But, uh, yeah, it is what it is. This thing is definitely a full hand-filling grip. Even for me, with my uh, bigger than average hands here, we got a little bit of a uh, platform here down at the bottom. Might give you a little bit more control with your uh, pinky as you're uh, doing things. And we have uh, just an amazing amount of uh, lock bar access there. No real complaints. They didn't really chamfer anything on... Uh, either side but they really really didn't need to so there we go we have a external blade pin which means it's not uh, mounted through the blade itself uh, it goes uh, and mounts on uh, either side of the uh, the titanium scales there but we can see exactly where that uh, kind of notches in which is uh, right behind that flipper tab right behind there. So I guess in, you know, crazy future, if you really did need to, uh, or want to expand that, uh, choil into having a, a full finger choil or something like that, that pen's really not going to get, um, in your way there. As we can see the action on this thing, pretty darn good. It does have quite the heavy blade on it, of course, but, uh, yeah. Uh, I do like the ergonomics of this thing. It feels amazing in that hammer grip where you're just muscling through uh, materials, just, um, you know, uh, breaking out that uh, inner caveman or uh, something like that. Feels really, really good. Um, because of the, uh, the large hump on the back there, um, for me, using a pinch grip, at least on the handle itself, not super comfortable, but, I mean, you can pinch up. If you are specifically looking to use that little area there, or you are trying to uh, do some uh, very, very intricate uh, kind of uh, carving sort of stuff with the, uh, the Scandi grind there, you can definitely do that. Reverse grip uh, feels good as long as you don't uh, do that full grip there because the, uh, the flipper tab and that uh, kind of notch down uh, at the end of the handle there might not be all that great but um, you know just holding it in the uh, the fingers there and actually pulling it through no problems there either they've done a pretty decent job with the uh, the inlay work um, like I said the micarta isn't the uh, the greatest uh, quality of all time but uh, it does seem to uh, add a, a nice bit of grip to it so that's good we can see all the uh, the micro milling. We got uh, that side, and then coming in at uh, the opposite angle there, and at the uh, what the apex uh, or the apogee of the uh, the curve there on the uh, the handle scales. And then um, yeah, I can kind of understand why, and uh, it doesn't bother me as much with um, having an uh, inlay there. But I still would like to see um, the, uh, in this case, I'll call it a subframe lock. 
uh, relief uh, to be put on the inside. But because they've done the uh, the inlays on the outside there, uh, they take away most of the, uh, the necessity to do any machining on the inside, which is why they uh, certainly didn't do uh, the lock bar relief in there or any of the other weight relieving measures because it's all done uh, externally instead of internally there. Yeah, so let's go ahead and talk about the rest of the uh, the specs here. So we got 3.7 millimeter blade stock thickness, which is still fairly thick, but it's not the full four millimeters that they're they're kind of known for uh, on uh, some of their uh, really really hard use folders. Uh, it is heavy though, 6.35 ounces or 180 grams. It's a weighty beast. See, I did mention uh, earlier that it was uh, 3.26 inches from the uh, the tip of the Scandi there to the uh, kind of point on the, uh, the scales. That ends up being 82.8 millimeters. And then the handles on this guy here. Uh, at that um, kind of a point on either side, we, we got measured uh, 0.64 of an inch or 16.2 uh, millimeters. So fairly thick. Like I said, this thing is a very hand filling grip uh oh also no snaggle tooth or uh uh worries whatsoever no problems with the uh the blade being anywhere close to the spine there sad that i have to mention that but tucson has that problem on so many models uh, it just needs to be a part of uh my review process to let people know about that uh the tip on this guy uh definitely nice and safe you're not getting into there as well so yeah that's a that's a pretty darn interesting little piece here uh let's see we'll do a couple of uh blade size comparisons uh the blade is going to be probably a lot longer on the uh the manix 2xl here but uh yeah there we go so it's definitely not that long of a knife um yeah there we go with the uh, the pm2 Kind of similar as far as um, blade length, but of course PM2 also has a, a bit more handle length uh, going on with it. Mostly due to the uh, the finger troil um, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, let's see. Well, there's PM3, I suppose. Let's pull out my uh, Griptilian as well. That seems to be... Uh, Fairly lengthwise uh, in uh, ratio with it. Close that guy up properly. All right, and there's a 940. That's also fairly similar as far as length proportions are concerned. There's a bug out. Certainly uh, a bit of a smaller knife. But... Let's see, then we got the Ontario Rat number one. Much longer as far as the, uh, the handle is concerned, and a little bit longer uh, as far as the blade is as well. And then we got the Elementum. Uh, much smaller knife, but there you go. That should uh, hopefully give you uh, an idea of the, uh, the kind of size and everything that this thing is uh, packing. Yeah. I think this thing is, um, it's, it's quite useful. Um, I've been enjoying kind of carrying it, uh, off and on the last couple of weeks and, uh, it's been fun using it. Uh, I haven't really used the, uh, the Scandi grind up top all that much. It is fairly useful for, um, kind of those chiseling tasks. If you're trying to like, I don't know, remove a sticker or scrape something off of, uh, whatever it does a, a pretty good job on there, but a chisel tip would also do pretty good on there as well. So, you know, a lot of the, uh, the Scandi grind, uh, sort of, um, blade configurations are pretty darn good for woodworking, which I don't do a whole lot of. So I haven't really, you know, messed around a lot with that, but, uh, I look forward to, uh, probably doing that in the future. But yeah, I can definitely tell you this knife is not going to be for everyone. Uh, this thing can uh, absolutely demolish a whole bunch of cardboard if that's kind of what you're doing, but uh, it might fall short in some other kind of EDC rolls and stuff like that. So, yeah, 
it's uh, up to uh, reviews like mine and a whole bunch of other people's who uh, might or might not actually uh, take a close look at these guys to uh, determine whether or not it's something that you actually want to uh, try to add to your collection or not. Uh, I did pay a bit too much for this knife. Uh, I think I paid about 106 but uh, most places I've seen, um, White Mountain does have it right around that price, if not a little bit more. But uh, I've seen other places uh, like Tangley on uh, Amazon and stuff like that uh, in the Y Start store uh, list this guy for about 85 which I think is a, a pretty darn good value for what you're getting there. It is still their, uh, their D2. Uh, their D2, from at least from my experience, seems to outperform a lot of the other uh, Chinese brands uh, out there who will use that sort of stuff. Uh, Free Tiger, um, Civivi slash Sen Cuts, uh, CJRB, and stuff like that. It seems to do a bit better than uh, than their particular uh, versions of the same steel. Don't know if uh, that's down to the heat treatment that they do on it, or if they're uh, getting it from a different source that uh, has a little bit more... Um, purer or more consistent uh, results or something like that. Not sure. But uh, that's just kind of been my um, experiences overall with it. Um, with how large and wide this thing is, uh, I understand that it was really easy to put this uh, this um, lanyard hole back here. I don't think it's really all that necessary, though, unless you really want to keep this thing way, way down in your pocket and have the, uh, the lanyard come up and uh, flip over for you to uh, grab and uh, <laughs> remove this obelisk from the depths of your pocket or something like that. Uh, it just doesn't really seem all that necessary as far as I'm concerned. But hey, uh, I'm, I'm certainly not one that uh, enjoys using lanyards anyway. So that's not really for me to say, I suppose. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a closer look on the inside of this guy. If that's not something you're uh, you're into, uh, feel free to uh, click off and find something a little bit more interesting for you. Um, for the rest of us, we're going to go ahead and uh, disassemble this guy so we can see what's going on under the hood. It's not massively exciting under the hood, but uh, still, let's go ahead and do it. There's the, uh, the pivot screw there. I ended up putting that Loctite on there. It didn't come with it. Right, and then uh, wiggle this guy a little bit. Knock, knock, I'm coming in. Whether you like it or not. It's that uh, pin up top here that's uh, actually holding on a bit. So if I actually shove the, uh, the pivot out there, then I can probably pivot it by that. Or there we go. It'll just all come apart all at once there. But, uh, okay, so... That first thing there, I was apparently completely inaccurate on, and uh, they did actually do some weight relieving on the inside there. They left a little uh, kind of bar on the inside, a little interesting on there. Obviously, they couldn't do both of those there because they need room for the lock bar. Uh, no uh, over-travel stop on the uh, the hardened steel insert because they're using the, uh, the micarta to do that uh, particular task. And then pocket clip held in with two screws instead of one. And these are uh, T8, uh, not T6 screws on the inside there. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, at that point, if they had milled, uh, you know, these things on the inside here, uh, would have preferred still to uh, have that lock bar on the inside. But I suppose it's not really hurting anybody all that much. Uh, and then we just have a little tiny backspacer here. Looks like it's got a little bit of a oil and schmutz on it. But that's all right. We got that uh, stop pin there that I would, no, it was uh, hung up on a little bit. And then, yeah, here's the uh, the call out pivot college here with their, uh, I'll just drop that apparently, a uh, little domed appearance and all that sort of stuff. Oh, I actually uh, really, really need that to uh, put this thing back together correctly, at least. Um, so, yes. There we go, D-shaped pivot, and it is on the show side because this is a, uh, a new design rather, an old, rather than an older one that uh, they don't end up doing that with. And then, of course, we have their uh, standard ceramic bearings in the, uh, the nylon cages here. And then, yeah, not really... 
anything super special to see here. I did see here that uh, at least back on the uh, the lock interface sort of section there, it was actually uh, burned just a little tiny bit. Something I haven't really seen from uh, Two Suns or a whole lot of other uh, manufacturers lately. Uh, but something that uh, used to happen uh, quite often, and uh, it's absolutely nowhere near the cutting edge. Really doesn't matter, and especially at the uh, the very very end of it, um, doesn't really mess with the uh, the lock interface all that much either. Still, no burr on the back side of there that I do notice from just about every other manufacturer besides Tucson there. So uh, you know that's something. Good to go on, and uh, we do have just a, a little hint of a uh, uh, detent ramp. Not really much of one. It doesn't really feel like there's much uh, going on there, but there, there is a little bit, so all right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, close the thing back up, lift the uh, frame lock up for a moment there. And you can see wrist cam, which I might not have uh, had available for a while, but there you go. In case uh, you actually like the look of uh, someone's wrist, there it is for you. If not, well, my apologies, but uh, it's kind of hard to um, do a whole lot of uh, screw driving without um, ending up having that uh, be a uh, prominent feature. There. But yeah, we're all back together. No problems there. Uh, it is just a little bit uh, kind of obvious that uh, this uh, dome call-out pivot collar doesn't quite meet that peak of the uh, the handle scales there. So we, we'll see a little bit of a shadow, or at least I certainly do a little bit more than y'all do from the uh, lighting perspective. Uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, it is what it is. These uh, pivot collars aren't bespoke to this particular uh, knife, and they don't have a particular orientation to have that... Uh, Kind of be there but there we go there's the ts 500 a really really weird one from david chen but um definitely a cardboard warrior and apparently um you know uh, fairly decent as far as some wood carving goes on the front there but uh all righty there we go um as always i appreciate y'all for watching and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day yo and subscribe please